Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 41. I am joined by Zoro, and if you'd like to join the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story live thread and give us your best shot. If they're good, I'll read them on the air, and if they're bad, I'll let Zoro do it. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story members. Today, we're talking to Mark Sargent. Well, but more importantly, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap, so eat more string cheese. Callers can call in at 1-619-798-6307. Simply let us know that you are wanting to talk about episode number 41. The theme of the day? Well, it's Fantastic Friday, but it's also Flat Friday. This is the show where I pick an awesome comment and we read it to Mark Sargent. Except I got so many of them. Mark, my emails are filling up and it's all your fault. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before I, I get to the emails, mm-hmm. um, let's talk about your little debate, son. Yeah. So, the one thing I didn't like about the debate is... It seemed kind of one-sided, kind of condescending. I know, you, I know you get excited. Don't let them, don't let them see that they ruffle you. It's a passionate thing, I know. But, but, I, the so-called scientist—at least that's what he said he was—and yeah. I couldn't check credentials, so I have no idea if he was or not. He didn't give any actual facts when he was talking to you. I think his name was Mark B. something or other. Yeah. Yeah, so talk about that show for a minute. Tell me, what, what are uh, your yeah, actual it was, it was supposed Yeah, it was supposed to be a um, two-on-two debate with uh, that guy Mark and Richard Hoagland on their side, and then on my side it was going to be David Weiss and myself. And for, again, the, the show, I don't want to pick on the show too much, but it was supposed to be, you know, just a two-on-two thing. And what happened was was that Richard Hoagland was a no-show, but they, they gave him the benefit of the doubt. They said, okay, we'll just do a one-on-one and we'll sort of tag team it. So they brought this Mark guy in and they figured I could go one-on-one against this, this Mark guy. It's spelled with a C, not with a K. And he had no idea what he was getting into and so he did the, you know, the, the typical knee-jerk response and, and laughed and he was calling from a from a ufo convention and so he had a bunch of people <laughs> behind him and he, he was telling him it's like oh it's a flat earth thing and they were all laughing and that's what that's what got me uh got me a little riled up because i, I will say this you know I, yes i have some empathy because if for the people that are new to flat earth, you know, you're going to laugh, but I don't generally laugh at the person that's delivering the message. I may laugh at the message, but I'm not going to, you know, personally go after that other person. That's what he did. And and the people that were backing him up and just drove me insane. 
So I decided to go after him. And which is why you got all passionate about it. <laughs> you can well, totally hear it in your voice when you're well, talking to it. Just, it was just bugging me. Plus, he was he was the the answers he was giving were so terrible. See, okay, oh, the, that's a common theme. Um, when he was, I don't want to get too much into that show because again, it was another show by another. Host. Yeah, I yeah. I think the you moderator it, it's out there. didn't yeah. really moderate. Like he just let everybody free for all, and it's like you got to have some kind of professional you know courtesy when you're doing that kind of stuff yeah and i know he was trying and i know it's it's a, i know it's a it's a touchy subject but he should have talked to these people before letting them yeah. on air i mean that's yeah. just my opinion i um i like the way that you conducted yourself i like the second guy i think his name was brian something or other. something but, yeah i forgot his name but but yeah brian had a really good point and, and if you don't mind i'd like to rattle it off to anyone out there who's thinking about going into a debate which was because it was he was basically admitting some of the stuff that science is stuck on when it comes to this which is when i asked him it was something i came up with a couple months ago and i go look if you are you a scientist or anyone that's debating against flat earth wanted to grab the average person on the street and prove to them that the earth is a globe how would you do it how how would you do it you know and the the, the writer he actually didn't even wait for the writer which was and you have an unlimited amount of time and money and he has he says well I'd give the person 20 million dollars and and put him into a space program you know put him up in a rocket that's and other than that he goes there is no way to prove it the, all the math in the world is not going to help you to prove it to the average guy on the street. And he knew that. And I and my response is, okay, so everything, every all the proof is being held by the people that build the rockets, the people that have the space program. And that's where the crux of the issue is. If the only proof that, a science, that science can give, it's all coming from the same people, you're putting an awful lot of faith in those guys. I mean, an awful lot of faith to tell them exactly what, you know, they're, they're the ones that are telling you what the world is and everything about it, not just the world, but space. You know, they're the ones that say, oh, yeah, this is what Mars is. This is what Saturn is. is here's Pluto. Here's the sun. It all comes down to the same people. So everyone on the ground, the scientists, they're saying, oh, yeah, well, you got to take their word for it. And he knew this, which was... Now uh, Anyway. Aren't astronauts supposed to be scientists? Or, or I'm, I mean, uh, I don't really some, know too some, much about NASA. So. Some, some are, and some are just pilots. You know, some are, I mean, because they're mostly Air Force people. So they're, they're just flybys. They're people that fly a, a, a plane. But some have their special. I mean. Yeah, I mean, some, you know, some don't have any real piloting skills. Some are just scientists. But if you look it up, and we've, there's been documentaries done on this, so it's almost always military. I say, oh, no, uh, we've had civilians go up there. It's like, no, that's not true. It's almost always somebody that's, that's I think enlisted. the only civilian they ever had go up there was that lady in the Challenger, and it exploded. So, <laughs> Well, there's been a few others, but, yeah, you can look. Again, there's a great documentary, and I can't remember if it was Jaron that did it or another guy, but uh, there, he went through them and is going, no, they're all, they're all military. Uh, so yeah, not necessarily <laughs> scientists, but people you can control. Okay, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna touch on a few few questions from last week. Um, sure, go ahead. The Psalms 19:1. Yep. Uh, you, what exactly does that say? Depends what version of the Bible you're looking at, but well, the, let's uh, let's be just general. The, okay, the, the King the King James version, which is probably the most popular out there. At least in my circles, is that the um, uh, the firmament shows his handiwork? Okay, and what does that say to you? Oh well, I mean, it's talking, it's referencing the old the, the Old Testament Genesis uh, firmament, which was you know Genesis one six, the first book of the Bible, which says uh, when God was building the world, he uh, I'm saying he because we have to. Well, you need to be able to. Yeah, you, you uh, have to have some kind of location. Uh, yeah, yeah, when I say he, I'm not going to say he, she, by the way, because we'll just to make it quicker. But that he built a firmament, a, a, a dome-like structure over the world that was that was being created, that, that literally said separated the waters above and the waters below. 
Now, what exactly does that mean? Literally, there was waters above and there's waters down here? We, you know, we, we don't know. But there was a structure put in place, a barrier to, to set there. Now, again, when you're talking about the father of rocket science, and we all heard the jokes. It's like, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out. That's the guy they're talking about, Werner von Braun. Uh, you know, he was the, the perennial rocket scientist. I, I can list me three other rocket scientists that anybody knows about. It's that guy. So why was his headstone? Why does it well, say Is this the same gentleman that I was referring to who started kind of a modern flat earth movement? He's the one that was, he was in Zion, Illinois. No, Werner von Braun? Yeah, I can't remember his name. No, 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 different no, no, different guy. Werner von Braun was the father of NASA. He was the Nazi okay. scientist, the, the high-profile guy that shook hands with presidents and kings. And uh, He was the guy, you know, he was also the guy in the 50s that said, yeah, there's, you're never getting to the moon. It's never happening. It would take way too much money, and the technology would be un- unbelievably difficult to do. And then a few years later, he's like, oh, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> what What happened? Oh, well, our, our special effects department got much better, so now we can pretend to go to the moon. But beforehand, from an engineering standpoint, he goes, yeah, it's never, it's never good. It's way too hard to do. And uh, yeah, he retracted all that, which was very, very interesting. But yeah, why was he mentioning on his headstone? Why was the father of rocket scientists, I'm sorry, scientry, um, why was he talking about a structure? Not only that, why was he mentioning a Bible passage at all? He's a scientist. Science and religion, uh, that's it's a little dicey as a combination. <laughs> Just <So>. slightly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Um, I'm just trying to wrap up some of the questions from last time. Um, sure. Okay, and this was episode 40 that I'm looking at. So, okay. What are your thoughts on Einstein's gravitational waves detected? This Now, this this came out. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, look, recently. So I treat it no differently. And I mean, I, literally, when I say this, no differently than every other curiosity story that's ever come from space. Uh, because it's just a globe reinforcement. I know that sounds too simple for anyone out there. That well, no, don't. no, because look, all the stuff that's happening in the media, you said, get. You, Run through your list of people that are aware of, <laughs> of flat Earth. You said it was B.O.B. Oh yeah, uh, Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila. Uh, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, but he's against. Uh, but yeah, the celebrity list is not very long yet. Uh, but the gravitational wave thing—they announced it, and it got massive media coverage because it was uh, the the can't remember the science organization. They they were the ones to help promote it. But but Jeffrey Grubb did a wonderful debunking thing on the press conference where he's saying, "Look, it's all about." The, the money. This is about money, big money science. And that is, these guys were up for a grant. They were up for a contract renewal. They had failed in all other things. Of course, if you're up for a contract renewal and you want to get a renewed contract, you've got to show results, whether it's real or not. And I know people say, no, no, science never lies. It's like, my ass, they don't lie. Of course they do. So, but that wasn't the point. But for the reason why the mainstream media covered it, because it's really a boring story and nobody knows anything about gravitational waves. So yeah. it might as well have been the face on Mars, the thing on Saturn, because it doesn't matter what the story is. <clears throat> it's the subtext, which is I'm looking at the face on Mars because I'm on a globe looking at the face on Mars. I'm looking at Saturn, globe, gravitational waves it, from two black holes you coun't even, you had to do a computer artist rendering of. Uh, that it has nothing to do with the, the gravitational waves. It makes you think about space, and in this case, deep space. Because if you're thinking about deep space, you're on a globe. Uh, that's all the story is, and there's nothing There's nothing more to okay. it. Okay, at the exact same time, they <laughs> there was another scientific group that came out with Planet Nine. It's so yeah. far out that it orbits the sun every ten to 20,000 years. Yeah. Why put it in the news? Why... Why talk why, about it? Why, why go through all this? I mean, if, if Flat Earth is starting to get out there. It's their only they... defense. It's their only defense, other than saying there's no Flat Earth. Um, it's their only real defense, and it's it's a pretty good move, which they've been doing now. I mean, it's, it's every day now. It's, it's, we've got to run a space story every day, because the more space stories they run, the more people say, well, again, wh- whether you care about it or not, it's that you acknowledge that there's a space story. And once you acknowledge it, some sort of, you know, you might as well be a fill-in-the-blank space story. Just every day, just imagine it. you're going to look in the news and that's going to be it. There's going to be a fill-in-the-blank space story on the front co- cover of the news, which is says something happened in space 
which means you're on a globe. That's it. Forget about whatever the title is. That's what the story is. Something happened outside of this world because you're on a globe flying through space. That's it. That's all they want to do. That is the reinforcement pattern that they thought of months ago now, and they run the stories every single day. If it's not NASA, it's not a space organization. If it's not a space organization, it's a ground science organization that's going, and the, and the media has been told, you, you are going to run this on page one. Okay, so listen, we're, we're out of time for the segment. I, I, I want to touch on so much more. We'll, we'll be right back. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. Okay, so you are listening to Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 41. Now, I... Today's Fantastic Friday, and we get to pick one awesome question that we found in the comments that we think that people may have. And so this one's going to be from a gentleman back for more. That's B-A-C-K, the number four, M-O-R-E. And uh, if you can back for more, do me a favor and write us at Humana Story so you can get in contact with me. Because... We want to get in contact with you. And when you get in contact with us, we get to tell you why. On Fantastic Friday, we read all the comments and we respond to the ones we like. And why? Because we can. So, <laughs> Back for More says, I think the closer we get to a dome, the stars disappear. I think the stars follow a magnetic field line. My question is... Is there a way to test the stars at night, dimming the higher you go, without violating balloon night launch laws? And are you no. guys interested in finding this out, or am I just wrong about my assumptions? No, it's a it's a good one, and uh, it get, the, the weather balloon laws. I'd, I'd feign ignorance on this one, which is put put the balloon up anyway. You know why not at this point? Look, you're going against a group that's lying to you, so that's a, that's a good idea. Put a weather balloon up and set the cameras to to be pointing up while you're doing it, or at least several of the cameras to to be pointing up so that you can view you know what happens to the stars as you get up at higher elevations. It could be what he's asking there could be one of the big reasons why they're kind of shunning away from night weather balloon launches. Okay, so. And I have a secondary question. Now, again, back for more, I want you to contact us. Um, Sinsway, S-I-N-Z-W-A-Y, he wrote, has anyone explained impact craters on the Earth and Moon? Oh, you mean how they happen or why they're there? No, he just uh, says, has anyone explained? Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've mentioned it in several other interviews, but I'll, I'll give it to him real quick, and that is... Uh, they were put there. They were there before we got here, and we, and we, we, which is not hard to imagine anyway. Because if our civilization, our history only goes back five thousand years unbroken, then whatever craters are here happened before we got here. So they either happened in a previous civilization or they were placed there during the construction of it. Um, a better, more interesting question would be the moon craters that somebody suggested. Again, the internet high mind is so great at this stuff where they said, why are all the, the impact craters on the moon so perfectly symmetrical? You know, like, like it hit straight on. Shouldn't there be, you know, if, 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 if an asteroid or a you know, came in sort of sideways, shouldn't we get sort of like a skidding thing, like we see like a bug off of a in front of a car? You know, because they're hitting at all angles. They, they can't be all hitting at right angles. But the moon, apparently, all these craters, they hit dead on. 
And it's like, well, no, gravity caused it to go like that. It's like, really? Wouldn't you get a, sort of a glancing blow every once in a while? Or even a meteor that, like, you know, skidded off the surface and part of it still, you know, took off and, and kept going into space? We don't see any of that. It, it, they all seem like they were hit from exactly one angle, which was straight on. Anyway, just a thought. That's your thought? That's all yeah. you have? No? That's, <laughs> just, it's, 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 okay, it's thought. so the question of the day is if... We are inside of a dome, yeah. And you found the edge, yeah. Would you try to break through it? Would I try to break through it, or would or would yep. our civilization you. try you. to break through it? No, you. Um, back in the fifties, if I well, if I put myself in their shoes back in the day, yeah, I probably would. Uh, now, Mark. Mark, would I? All right, fine, fine, fine. Would I personally do it? Maybe. I mean, it's too tempting not to at least try to figure out what I the. Wait, wait, what wait. it is. So are you telling me that you are spreading hysteria and you wouldn't go through? Well, no, you try you test it out, of course. You know, you'd bring up anything, you know, see what it was made out of. But but of course, it's our instinct. That's human instinct is to try to test the, the boundaries. And that means, okay, can we get through it? You know, if, if you if you walked up to it, okay, give you a different analogy. If you walked up to it and it looks sort of paper thin and it looks sort of flimsy, and God, boy, we would get through this piece of cake. Yeah, you might be able to. You might try it. You might bring a cannon up to it and, and fire the cannon at it and say, oh yeah. But if you saw the other side, like for example, if you saw the other side, it was water. If it was like an ocean and you could actually see through it, and a big whale swam by, would you still try to break through it? It's, nah, probably not. Because then you, you knew there was consequences that, that go with it. But yeah, would I would I try to break through it? Yeah, I'd probably do it. Which is why I have empathy for the guys that, that did it. It's a natural Who would you bring instinct. With you? To tr- to go with me out of it. Mm-hmm. Who would you go with? Oh, the first time, no one, because I wouldn't want to put anyone else in danger. Uh, who knows what, what would happen to me out there? So I'd I'd probably try to do it solo, just to uh, just to see you know. If it was it was worth anybody's time, and then I'd come back, I'd say, "Yeah, it's great. The water's fine." Not literally the water. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, but no, if you didn't come back, that'd be a problem. If oh, I didn't yeah. come back, but no, no, I go by myself. Yeah. I wouldn't. Okay, yeah. so Mr. MK has a couple questions. Like he he really worked hard on these questions too. Like sure. I saw him in his room late at night. Like he didn't sleep. So, uh, Mark, go ahead and uh, tell him. Mark, your uh, your question. What if you could fly a plane high enough to reach the flat earth barrier? Do yeah. you think that we could be able to go through it or just crash into it and fall back to the earth? Uh, no, I don't think any aircraft that we've ever made has the ability to, to penetrate this structure uh, for whatever. I think it was very, it was built specifically with that in mind. So no matter what you made down here, uh, airplane, rocket, weapon. I don't think it can penetrate it. It's. I think it's very thick, very old, and made of a technology uh, that was deliberately created to stop us from going anywhere. Now, whether it was there to protect us from what's on the outside or to protect the outside from us, we're not. We're not sure. But uh, no, I, I don't think that. In fact, you know, the question is: even can even a uh, a UFO or a spaceship, whatever you want to call it, can an object like that that's running like a unified field engine, can they even warp outside of it? <sighs> that's a tough one. You know, can can harp be used to disrupt it? I doubt it. Can CERN be used to penetrate it? Maybe, maybe it could be the, one of the reasons why we created it was was to see if we could bust out of this place, jailbreak scenario. Oh God, there's a whole thing behind CERN too now, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but what so, about NASA? I mean, NASA. You know, I think uh, as a question, uh, they put a, you know, NASA putting a rocket into space and and found out that it hit the dome and blew uh, up, and maybe that's why. Oh, Na- space, NASA space pro. Space well, program. NASA NASA didn't even have to put their own rockets up into space. They the, the Department of Defense was shooting rockets up just as NASA was formed in the late 1950s and 1958. So I think they, which was another reason why between the United States and the Soviet Union, they compared notes and they just fired rockets unmanned 
uh, with atomic weapons a lot of the time, just to paint the sky and to figure out the dimensions of this so that when they actually created the fake space program, they wouldn't, they would lose as few rockets as possible because they knew how high up they'd have to, you know, when they'd start having to arc over before, uh, you know, the rocket would hit the edge. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's... Yeah. All, all it takes okay. is money. Here's a hypothetical question for you. What if you had a submarine, okay, yeah. and it had a real big drill on the front of it, <laughs> and you could go through it, yeah. what would you find on the other side of it? Another dome or space or another world? Uh, if the if the worlds aren't or dome or places like this, if they're not if they're not too close together, then you would have these sections of really nothingness. You know, where it could be just ice and snow or ground or whatever it is between. But we don't know the distance between this world and the next world. Uh, and I'm I'm playing the odds here, which is you'd never. It, this isn't a one off where you live now. There's more worlds than just this one. And uh, you know, unless it's a dimensional thing where all the worlds are stacked on top of each other, but I'm not going to go into that scenario. I'm going to go with the, the one that people would probably understand most, and that is, what if these worlds are stacked like eggs in an egg carton? Uh, you, could you get into the next world? Yeah, maybe. Look up the story, um, the Iron Republic, which is a great story. Which is there's another world right o- right next to us, and that for the most part we're we're not supposed to travel between worlds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that sucks. I just got a news ticker that said the guy who created uh, uh, Harper Lee, the guy who created <laughs> Kill a Mockingbird, died at 89. Oh, what's yeah, that? I don't like that book. I know. It's probably so, right next next to the space story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what other questions did you have there, Mark? Okay, I'll go. Uh, here's another one. Um, you have to coax him into what, telling him. What, what do you... What do you think about taking a helicopter over the South Arctic? Do you think it could prove your flat air theory? Uh, it would, and if you have any sound effects to cue into there, like a plane going down. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not going to go very far because you're going to get shot down. Uh, there's, they, that's the whole point. Uh, they've had so many years to set up defending the Antarctic that even if you had a helicopter... That would, uh, you know, and, and but, but what I'd be more nervous about anything if I try to take a helicopter and, and charge the ice uh, is one, it's too, too slow. But even if you got in unnoticed and nobody figured out that you were actually flying a helicopter and looking for the edge, I don't know if you'd have enough fuel to, to make it to the edge. Because remember, <clears throat> Admiral Byrd was looking from 1928, 1927, uh, all the way until his, um, his death in, in 1957. So he was looking for decades with planes. You know, he, he was a big helicopter guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's early. And he um, he was flying around there for years, you know, setting up fueling stations and didn't find it. So I don't think a helicopter would have nearly the range to, to find what you were looking for. Nice idea, though, okay. but I don't, I don't recommend anyone grab their local helicopter and launch it off a ship and, and say, we're going to find the edge. I don't think you're going to make it. I just don't think there's enough enough gas. Yeah, you might there. crash into it, right? Well, no, I just don't think you're gonna. The, I don't think you have enough fuel to to make it that far. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is pretty big. Yeah. Oh, you don't know, Mark? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've well, been down I there. Mean, a helicopter. Oh. I don't know much about God. helicopters. I don't. Well, have no, heli- their fuel helicopters ranges. don't have the range that 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 pl- they don't have the range that planes do. <laughs> you're sacrificing the vertical mobility for uh for horizontal range and that's what um yeah they, they just yeah i just don't think they'd, they'd be able to go very far sorry what else you got <laughs> okay what about when you look through a skin you know you look through a telescope you can see mm-hmm. other planets like the moon uh jupiter mars pluto mm-hmm. do you think that's fake too oh yeah oh to give oh, i answered that question with another question which is if you take a a pair of binoculars out to a planetarium and you know inside a planetarium and you're looking at jupiter inside a planetarium with binoculars does it look more real or less real and doesn't matter what your answer is because you're you know you're in a fake system it's all fake so that's the that's the the theory here and that is 
it's, so what? You know, you're you you're in a telescope and you're looking up at a bunch of lights. If the lights aren't real, what you if you're in a giant planetarium, you, everything you're looking at is fake. Uh, don't 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 sell yourself short and just stop at the planets. Look at the moon, because how can there, there be shadows on the moon if there's no Earth between the sun and the moon? If it's a flat Earth, how can the the moon turn red? If there's no Earth to turn it red for for a blood moon, and that is because the whole everything you see up there is fake. The the whole thing is just a bunch of pretty lights. It's a Hollywood sound soundstage. It's the Truman Show. Uh, so yes, the the planets. The, and remember the high detail. The, the because you're gonna say, well, that we've got high detailed pictures of of the planets. Really, who showed you those? Because they weren't taken from a telescope down here on Earth. They were given you know, to you. You by, had this argument with that Mark. Yeah. I don't even know what the hell's his yeah, name, D'Angelo. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll call him D'Angelo. Where where he was saying, because it's an old argument, which is, well, if everything we see in the sky is round, that means we're round. It's like, no, that just means that everything in the sky appears to be round. It doesn't it doesn't relate to you at all. It relates to it all if you want to build the system. But, you know, if you want to build the solar system model, but if you're not, then they're just lights in the sky. So I wanted to ask you... Um, yeah we're next to a college like a big college too it's uh what i would like to do is go to that college and see if i can find someone what would you say an astro astro astrophysicist or an astronomer or radio okay. telescope operator so you want an actual scientist if i can get one on the on the show yes i'll, I'll save and, the time yes of course i would debate them Absolutely, I don't care if they're a physical scientist. They could be a geologist, a hydrologist, an oh, archaeologist. I don't. I don't. One care. that would actually so, talk to you, not not you're, degrade you. You're not gonna. Thing. You're not gonna get one. They're they're not gonna really? take it. Anybody and one. my. Um, you, you won't because they've got too many letters next to their name. They've got too much education, and if they spent even an hour looking at this, they'd realize it would be sticky at best for them to get in because no one wants to be the guy. No one wants to be the look. We've been we've been asking. No one wants to be the guy to come on air, either on video or audio or whatever, and be the scientist that gets shot down. That that says an awkward thing. That because the, everything sticks on the internet now, and they don't they won't. It'll it will just be broadcast everywhere. It'll be like you know, scientist loses debate. You know, science, you know, has horrible awkward moment while debating flat Earth. You know, you can imagine the headlines. You want to be that guy. You're never going to be published again. You know, any any chance you ever had of advancing your academic career and credentials is gone. So no, no, they're not going to come out. Uh, well, maybe uh, maybe someone's bold enough and dumb okay. enough to do it, but I can't okay. Imagine they're so come out. we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show um, because I'm out of time. So okay. back for more when you get a chance. Contact us. Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 